Hello once again and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and in today's tutorial we'll be working on our well. I'll try and show you lots of new techniques this time, the idea being to improve your modelling skills not just to have a nice outcome. This is part two so make sure you've had a look at part one and as always you can check out my website for lots of courses from beginner to advanced levels and all the courses are free. It's worth just quickly noting as well that I'm using lots of reference images as you can see here and this is not in any way original. This tutorial is also influenced by Iris Ogley, particularly when it came to the bend technique of creating the base of the well. I saw his tutorial and loved the idea, so used it in mine. And unfortunately, that's why the first video got a copyright strike. Iris felt that this was an identical copy of his, which was not my intention at all. There are slight differences, but I can see why he got upset. But I've spoken to him now and he's happy for me to continue. And it's also worth pointing out, his work is fantastic. He works in Maya, but his techniques are fantastic and his art style is brilliant. So even if you are a Blender enthusiast, take a look at some of his speed art videos and you can get some ideas about how to create your own pieces. Anyway, so today's lesson we're looking at the roof tiles and the way I've gone about creating them is to start off with a plane. So I'm going to start it down the bottom here, shift right click to bring my cursor to this point and shift A, mesh plane. Remember you can go to add as well, mesh plane up the top here. And that creates our plane down the bottom here. I can press full stop on my numpad to zoom into that. Period key to Americans. And my shortcut keys are kind of behind this dialog box at the moment. I'll just minimize that. And they're down here. So with our plane selected, let's go into edit mode with tab. And I'm going to make the shape of a tile from the top view. So I'll press control R and do two loop cuts down this side. So I've used my wheel to create two loop cuts. And if I left click once, I can move those cuts or right click to keep them in the same place. Now you can see I'm on vertex mode at the moment. So one, two, and three are vertex edges and faces. So I'll select these two front vertices and pull them out. So grab in the Y axis, and just pull them out to there. So this will be the top of my tile and this will be the front. I'm not going to make it solid yet. I'm going to come out of object mode and duplicate that. So tab out of object mode, duplicate with shift D and then X to just pull it over to the side. And one more duplicate, Shift D, X, and pull it out to the side. So I'm going to create three variations of tiles, and then we can link them all together and adapt them as we see fit. So the first one, I want a little nick in here. Let's press Control R, create a loop cut just there, and bring it down a touch, and then press K on my keyboard, and K is the knife tool. Can you see how it's following my edges with a green square? So wherever I click, it will create new topology. So I'm creating some random topology at the moment. Once you've finished, you press enter and you can see it's created those cuts. I'll undo that for a moment. I'll press K again to get to my knife tool once again. Now you can cut from anywhere. So at the moment I'm cutting in all different places. And if you don't like a cut, you can right click and cancel it. It's also worth saying that you have your controls along the bottom here. And that's true for any tool you have selected. And if I cut like this, I create lots of n-gons, which are faces with more than four edges, and they can cause me problems later on. I'll undo that once again. What I'm trying to do, if I press K again, and this is why I created this loop cut, is to create a cut in here, and then I can delete this face, and I've still got quads everywhere. So if I go into the knife tool again, generally what you're trying to do is keep to where the vertices are. So cut between two vertices, and you can see how it snaps to the different vertices. It is okay if you have to, to create some triangles or n-gons, but generally speaking, you want to try and avoid them where you can. I'll undo that last bit, go to face mode, select that face and delete the face. So we've got a tiny nick there, and I'll just bring that in by grabbing it a bit. For the next two, I'll just adapt the shape slightly. So they're a little less uniform. So I want to solidify these. I could use the solidify modifier over here. And you can see the thickness being created there. I don't actually want to do that, so I'm going to just close that down because it's actually easier to select all three at the same time with shift, go into edit mode, select all the faces. So faces with three, and then A to select all and E to extrude, rather than going to each shape and doing a solidify modifier. But just to make you aware that it's there. So we've got three tiles that we can adapt. I'm going to go into object mode and just bring them together. So G then X and G then X. And then round to front view, roughly 
rotate so they're going to sit on top of each other like so now these are sort of very thick and chunky but that's the style I'm going for also you'll probably notice that I'm not beveling the edges I feel a bit like the roof tiles don't really need it and they can just have that sort of chunky look so now I can select all three I can go to top view shift D to duplicate and just look at my shape and see how far I need to go somewhere around there now at this point you might want to look at a reference image the one I'm looking at is this one here and you can see how they're all slotted in together and quite higgledy piggledy my original has them a bit more uniform but I think I prefer this one in some ways so I might adapt my idea slightly but the important thing is that you do look at your reference images regularly to kind of keep you grounded in the style so let's select all these shift D to duplicate and I want to bring them out to the front so if I tap Y now I can bring them forwards and if I go to side view I can start creating that tilt so rotate and then tilt them round and at the moment they're very uniform still so I can box select these bottom set grab and move them across a little bit and then sort of overlap them like this at the ends select that first lot again top view shift D to duplicate and bring them down there side view just to make sure that's in line back to top view and let's start adapting our shape again a bit So I've got three rows of tiles, and I think that's about right. So this should be fine, but I may need to adjust the shape slightly. So let's go back into top view and start moving some of these around. Again, there's lots of ways to do this. I'll choose a slightly different way this time. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to join them together with Control J. So that joins all your object together, and now it becomes one object. I can go into edit mode and move aspects of this shape around. But what I can do is go up to sculpting. Now if you're not particularly interested in sculpting then you can skip this step and just use proportional editing as we did in the last episode. So it's sculpting at the top here just to show you something different. Let's click on that tab to enter sculpt mode. And now I can start pulling these shapes around but I'm on my draw brush at the moment so it will just draw across the shapes. I don't want that one, I want the grab brush here. And that will just grab vertices and pull them around. So I can just adapt the shape slightly so big shapes to start with and just make them less uniform and then I can make my brush smaller with F and I can come in and adapt some of these areas as I see fit I quite like the sculpting workflow I find it more arty but you can use proportional editing if you like this is just to show you the differences and the different options and remember to go at your object with different angles And there we've got a nice bit of variation. So let's go back to the layout mode. If I want to separate these once again, I can go into edit mode, select all, and P for separate will give you this option. And loose parts, because they are still loose parts. So click on that. And now each of them are separated. The only problem with this is that they all share this pivot point here. So I'm selecting on each of them, and they all share the same pivot point. So that was the last object we selected when we joined. So their pivot point became that point. We can change that by selecting all, go to object, set object origin, and origin to geometry. And then it goes to their geometry, and they're all back to where they were. So you can do some more finite editing at this point. And I'm really playing now with the sizes and shapes in line with my reference image that I used. I'm doing this all in object mode, but you can do this in edit mode. I'm just finding it a bit easier and I'm rescaling in different axes and really changing the shapes. So there I've got some nice random roof tiles. Now what you might find, although all my tiles are all separate up the top here, I think it's actually easier if they are one object it's easier to edit and we can do what's called a lattice a bit later on so I'm going to select them all again and control J to join control J now it came up with an error message and the reason was that I selected it all but I didn't seem to have an active object sometimes you have to have one object that's active and you can just activate that by selecting it last and blender does look for the last selected object as its reference point 
and you can see that object is highlighted in yellow. So when I press Ctrl J now, the pivot point becomes the same as that point. I think it'd be useful to have the pivot point in the middle. So up to object mode, set origin to geometry, and then it's back in the center. So there's a different creation method than the one I used up here. You don't have to join them all together and go into sculpt mode. You can use proportional editing like we did with the stones. Remember your proportional editing tool is up here and that affects you when you're in edit mode and you want to grab an object. You've got the circle of influence like this. And again, I find it easier when they're all joined together for that. If you don't want to keep separating them and joining them together again, you can press L over different areas to select the linked object and double tap A to deselect all or Alt A. So there's my tiles. I'm going to hide these ones up here. I've organized them into collections. And remember to do that, you select the objects you want to move and press M to move them to a collection and you can create a new collection down the bottom here. So select your objects and press M. That gives you the options over here where you can hide different areas that you need to. I'm going to move this into a new collection. So M, new collection, and this is going to be called Roof Tiles 2 and press OK. So with the old tiles, I'll hide them and I'll move these into position. Easiest in side view, so three on my numpad, grab it into position. Notice the circle appeared because I still have proportional editing turned on. Rotate it into place. Full stop on my numpad to zoom in and let's get a bit more accurate with this. I want them on top of my frame, somewhere around there. I'm going to have to scale it up a bit. I can just scale it all together. And just have a good look around and make sure you're happy with that. And before I copy this across to the other side, can you see how the top has a slight slope to it? And you do get that sometimes with sort of medieval buildings. They sort of sink in and the wood warps. So I want to do the same with my roof tiles to follow that curve. So what I could use is the bend modifier or the simple deform, but I want to show you something else which is called a lattice. So shift right click to bring my cursor to my object, shift A, and down in the middle is lattice. I can scale my lattice up to surround my roof tiles. So scaling in the X as well. And I do want to rotate it so it's the same angle as my tiles. And now if I scale and press Y twice, it keeps to its local axis because it's been rotated and it knows that's still its local Y axis. Don't panic too much if that doesn't make sense, but the more you hear these things, the more you'll understand them. So I'm just moving this to encompass all my roof tiles. And I'm going to scale in the Z local axis, so Z twice, S then Z twice. And that brings it in. Now I've got lots of tools with my lattice down here. So this is the object data tab, and it changes depending on what type of object you've got selected. Now there's something called resolution. And if I bring up the resolution to five, that will give it five segments across the middle. I can also change the other axes as well. So now what I want to do is link my roof tiles to this lattice. So when I change the lattice, it will deform my object. So I select the roof tiles first and the lattice last. So that's my active object and press control P for parent. So set parent. Then you've got lattice to form here. And now when I edit this shape in edit mode, selecting these points and grabbing them, you can see that it forms my shape inside. So into front view, and with those vertices selected, I can move the lattice around. And you can see my circle of influence from my proportional editing there, which is helping me. So I'm just box selecting the different vertices and pulling them into position. Now my lattice at the moment is in the wood collection by accident. So I can move my lattice by M, and then move it to the roof tiles, which would make more sense. And in my roof tiles collection, you can see the lattice there, and it's got my plane within the lattice. So I like the way this is looking, but I do need to adjust my frame slightly to adapt to this curve, and I think that will look better. So I'm going to click on the lattice and press H to hide, and then go into my wood and just adapt the frame very slightly. I've got proportional editing on to help me, and I'm selecting several objects at the same time and going into edit mode and just pulling them around slightly. 
so adding a bit more variation to my shape. I can also at any time see my lattice by clicking the eye next to it there. And then if I want to, I think it needs a cut in here as well, so I can go to my lattice. Oh, I need to select my actual lattice. So I can go to my lattice options down here and create a cut down the middle into edit mode. Box select those and drag them in slightly. Remember to change your circle of influence in proportional editing is the wheel. Let's hide that lattice again so we can see our finished shape. And I think that's great. So we just need to copy this across to the other side. So let's select our object with our lattice. Shift D to duplicate. Rotate Z 180 degrees. And move it across to the side. So side view, move them across. Just have a good look around and make sure that's into position. That's great. The last thing to do, I'll hide these lattices and let's adapt our wooden beam. So hopefully there's lots of new techniques for you there. In the next episode, we'll be adding the color and the ground layer, and I'll be talking a bit about rendering and lighting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.